Hello everyone, so we are back with another kind of retrospective on a movie I absolutely love, 1984's The Terminator. And I've kind of done this a few times before now, I did it with Alien, 1979's Alien, and with these kind of movies, I, I can't really do a numerical review on them because I would just unfairly give them perfect scores. They're iconic classics. I mean, I plan on eventually doing one on John Carpenter's The Thing and a few others. But, I mean, today I want to go over 1984's Terminator because it is now, on today's date, unless I really screw up something, the 40th anniversary to 1984's James Cameron's The Terminator. This originally came out on October 26, 1984, 40 years ago. And uh, I want to do the 20th anniversary on Alien vs. Predator, but I missed that by a week or two because I naively misremembered the release date. <laughs> <laughs> and so I double checked with Terminator and now I've double checked that it is coming out today on October 26, 1984. 40 years ago. <laughs> and so yeah, after 40 years, this movie has had quite an impact on my life. It has actually determined my dream goals at one point in my life and so i just today want to talk about some of the th aspects of this film that i truly loved things that infected my life seriously with this film and why this is one of my favorite fr film franchises of all time so interesting enough this is one of the few times where i saw a movie sequel before the original uh, it first happened with aliens i saw aliens before alien and then with the other one of the big three that i love in the tap uh terminators aliens and predators with predator i saw the second one before the first one and then with terminator i saw terminator 2 judgment day before i saw terminator 1. i don't know why this was the case what it just was uh weird coincidences or whatnot it wasn't intentional and i guess maybe my parents thought the first ones were just a little bit more graphic than the sequels just kind of interesting when you look back at predator 2 that movie got really graphic <laughs> but we're not talking about predator today we're talking about terminator and yeah Seeing Terminator 2, I was never a huge fan of that film when I was a kid. I I loved the beginning. I hated that they never showed the T-800 ever again. And it was just like, I watched the beginning of Terminator 2, and that's it. It's like, come on, Chris, we want to watch the whole movie. No, I, wa I only want to see the beginning, because that's where the cool robots are. And they never freaking showed them again. <laughs> but... One time, it's like, what's this? It's a Terminator. It's like, oh, is this like a sequel to... Ter no, this doesn't have three on it. It's like, no, this is the original one. It's like, well, why haven't I seen this one? It's like, yeah, we thought it was probably a little bit too graphic, but you want to watch it? It's like, sure. Keep in mind, I'm eight. <laughs> it's just like... Uh, we think it's just a tad too graphic for a seven-year-old. Uh, you just heard, hey, Chris. Okay, now you can watch The Terminator. <laughs> So, we pop this in. They're doing stuff in the house. I'm on the couch, playing with my action figures. And the movie's playing. And, you know, like, I'm kind of digging it. I'm kind of enjoying it quite a bit. And as the movie's playing, the scene happens where the truck blows up. I figure, oh, okay, this is the end. You know, he blew up the truck, the robot with the truck, and, uh, you know, 
I mean, overall, it was an okay movie. I mean, I kind of liked the scene where he was, like, doing surgery on himself. And, but, you know, it was a little just anticlimactic. Like, he got blown up with a truck. So, okay. And I'm, like, playing with my toys. I'm eight. Just reminding you. Playing with my toys. Kyle Reese and Sarah Connor are hugging each other. They think it's over. And then the T-800 stands up out of the fire and my jaw just hits the floor <laughs> I, I, I look like that wrestler that sees the Undertaker arriving on the stage you know the meme I'm talking about I'll put it up here just for context I, I literally had that reaction and it was in that moment I decided I want to make movies because I want to make that i absolutely love the ending to the first time there and with that ending i actually appreciate the film so much more if it didn't have that ending i would have thought it was a nothing film but with that ending it's like okay i'm going to watch the police station scene again where the shootout it's like man that was a pretty good scene actually i'm going to watch you know the the nightclub sequence man the nightclub sequence is really awesome and i i never really noticed these beforehand just because i was playing with my toys throughout most of the movie but after seeing that end sequence and just being glued to the screen it was like oh man this is amazing and of course like my mind just went wild with okay when are we getting a third one because i'd love to see a third one in more t800 action goodness yeah and i think I think it was this movie that kind of started making me notice directors because beforehand I never really cared about film directors it's just like oh um you know Spider-Man like it okay X-Men like it Blade like it you know uh, Starship Troopers I love that movie you know but I never really cared for who was directing what movie and then with like the Terminator it's like, yeah, I really like that movie. Then Terminator 2, it's like, I appreciate Terminator 2 a lot more now after seeing the first one. It's like, did the same guy who made the first Terminator make the second one? And I looked, it's like James Cameron. It's like, oh, okay. And so it's like, okay, so James Cameron made the Terminator and Terminator 2. And then I was watching, like, The Abyss. And I saw that name, James Cameron. I was like, oh, James Cameron, did he make the Terminator? And... It was like more and more I started realizing, okay, there are certain directors out there I really like. I really enjoy it. James Cameron was one of them. I may not agree with his politics all the time, but the guy knows how to make an entertaining movie. I mean, say what you will about the Avatar films, they're still well made. I mean, I may have some issues with the story in the first one and some smaller aspects of the second Avatar. I actually enjoyed the second Avatar more than the first one because, like, I've already done a video on the two Avatar films. And, like, the first Avatar movie, it, it was like a 50-50 movie for me. I liked half the movie. I hated half the movie. And so, and I didn't have that with the second one. I actually enjoyed the second one a lot more than the first one because... It was a little bit more focused and it didn't have a couple of the major plot holes and laps in judgment <laughs> with sorry characters like honestly in my video of the first avatar film which you can check out i'll leave the link for both of them down in the description below um jake Sully's kind of the villain in that movie because it's just like jake we need you to do this and he didn't do it he just let war break out <laughs> but anyway you can check out my favorite on those two films but overall like i have enjoyed james cameron as a director he, he usually makes really entertaining films even like titanic which i wasn't nuts about I can acknowledge that Titanic was a well-made film and you know like they did a really good job on that movie it's not the I'm not the craziest about it but well-made movie and so yeah um, I've always enjoyed his work and because of like Terminator I kind of started paying attention to who directed this movie I really like 
Oh, Joe Carahan. Okay, what else has he done? Oh, wow, he did that movie. He did that movie. He did this movie. And so there is kind of like a short list of directors out there that I follow and that I will always try out their stuff simply because it's like, okay, they consistently make really fun, entertaining, likable films. And so, yeah, not only did this movie... 1984's Terminator get me interested in making movies, but it also got me interested in knowing who directors were and knowing when to look out for a director when I got a movie I really liked. And yeah, there's directors out there. It's like, what's he working on? Oh, okay, that sounds interesting. I'll be sure to look for that. And so, yeah, th th like one of the biggest things that like people are always impressed like oh yeah the person who directed that was this it's like how'd you know that it's like i got this thing about directors and you know like n knowing what they've done or what uh it's kind of an unnecessary talent but you know it's a talent that i have and so mr cameron people should know how you saved us all how you raised the bar how will they know what a hero you are James Cameron doesn't do what James Cameron does for James Cameron. James Cameron does what James Cameron does because James Cameron is James Cameron. His name is James, James Cameron. The brave. Yeah, like what a basic film like the first Terminator was. It's probably my favorite one. So many people say that Terminator 2 is their favorite. And don't get me wrong, Terminator 2 is an awesome movie, but when it comes down to it, I gotta give it to the first Terminator as my being my favorite Terminator film of all time. Just with the story, with the action scenes, with the effects. I mean, so many of the effects were practically done. And that's something kind of the newer Terminators lost out on is the effects, they're kind of all CGI. And in the first Terminator film, most of the effects were practically done. And I loved it. I loved seeing a practically made T-800 moving around. It was so cool to me. And that's why the second one, the opening to the second one is so awesome. Because it's a practically puppeted T-800 that is so cool looking to me. And it's one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite robot in movie history of all time like i actively want to try and get a life-size t800 i don't know where i'll put it but one day i will have a life-size t800 with the face plasma rifle in the 40 watt range in his hands and it'll be in my studio in the corridor or something like that i don't know how i'll fit in it but we, I'm, I'm going to get it done somehow, some way, sometime. Because <laughs> I just, I love the T-800 design. It is one of the coolest robot designs I've ever seen. And I kind of don't like the redesign to the T-800 that they did with terminator genesis or they, they say genesis but it's pronounced it's like spelled differently and so i always like jokingly say genesis uh they redesigned the t800 a little bit and i'm not nuts about that redesign that being said there was like a limited run on life-size t800s of that redesign that's like insanely detailed it's like okay I, I would take one of those if I could. <laughs> yeah, when looking at the other Terminator films, like, the first one's my favorite, second one's my second favorite. My third favorite is probably Salvation. My fourth favorite, believe it or not, is Genesis. Or Genesis. Yes, it has a lot of problems, but credit where credit's due, they tried doing something different with Genesis, and I kind of liked the bold attempt. They didn't pull it off, but I, I appreciate what they were trying to do with Genesis. And for that, I, I cut that movie some slack. My least favorite probably is Dark Fate, simply because 
they did something really bold with the beginning of Dark Fate. It's a very controversial thing. I won't spoil it here in case you haven't seen Terminator Dark Fate, but a lot of people hate that movie because of the first five minutes. And for me, I was kind of like, oh, let's see how this plays out. I'm kind of intrigued. And then they just proceeded to recreate step for step Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And it's like, you guys had some potential here. I was actually kind of intrigued by like kind of the shocking opening to Dark Fate. And if they had just gone on with that and like kept doing something kind of fascinating there, I think Dark Fate might have been one of the best Terminator films out there. But it was like they had this really cool idea and then it's like okay now that we've done the cool new take let's just go back and do terminator 2 judgment day again and it kind of sucked after that i know a lot of people will make the same argument with terminator 3 how it's just terminator 2 judgment day and they're absolutely right there's not a lot different but 3 does have that spectacularly dark ending that i honestly i did not think they were actually going to do even when i was in the theater watching it and seeing it and it's just like they're not doing this there's no way they're doing this and then the credits start rolling it's like holy shit they actually did that <laughs> and so that's why i give three a little bit more credit than dark fate but yeah uh i love the cast in terminator 1984 Odd Spencer there, it's like he, he was made for that role. They originally were talking about OJ Simpson being the Terminator, but the producers or James Cameron himself, they didn't see OJ Simpson's like pulling off being a killer, which is funny in hindsight, but like at the time in 1984, he was like a golden boy when it came to celebrity status in america i mean everyone knew who oj simpson was and so it's like oh come on no one would ever think that oj simpson could be a killer it's just like with bill cosby like there was a period of time bill cosby was america's dad it's like there's no way bill cosby would ever <laughs> ever do anything horrific he's america's dad oh my goodness what the hell <laughs> yeah and like that that's one thing about the original terminator that i miss is the practical effects uh there was a period of time like you look at the newer terminator films it's all cgi and i don't hate cgi but there's times when they do cgi and it's unnecessary and like with terminator salvation yes they had a lot of cgi but they also did practical effects when possible. And I appreciated that movie quite a bit. There was a lot of really great practical effects in that movie that looked amazing. And there was like one or two in Genesis that looked awesome, but it was mostly CGI. And then Dark Fate was completely CGI as well. And it's like, can we go back to the practical effects? Because with Terminal 1, the practical effects were amazing when Arnold Schwarzenegger was like fixing himself up in the bathroom those effects yeah it's obvious that they were doing like puppeteering and whatnot but those effects were incredible even to this day they've aged marvelously well and even later on when like he's looking through the phone book and he looks plasticky that was intentional because it was supposed to just, like show that his skin is like starting to fail and so i thought that was a great effect but like going back to the t800 and the ending like just ah uh, that thing was scary and badass and cool at the same time it was so awesome I, again i cannot stress this enough i will get a life-size t800 at some point in my life I don't know when, I don't know where, it's going to happen though. <laughs> that is how much I love that robot design. The T-800 is like one of the coolest robots ever. If there were actually Terminators and someone was saying like, hey, you want a TX? You know, I, no, I want a T-800. Like the TX is cool, 
I've always liked the TX design. I've always liked how Christina Loken, Lorcan? I don't know how you pronounce her name. In the third Terminator looked, is like, yeah, she's a great female Terminator. Um, T-800 is keen for me. That That's what I want. I want a T-800. I don't want a T-1000. I don't want a TX. I don't want a T-3000. I don't want a Rev-9. I want a T-800. Because <laughs> it's just such a cool design. But yeah, so 40 years. That is crazy. 40 years it's been since this movie came out. This movie has aged wonderfully. I mean, it's one of those timeless films. You always hear about people say like, well, we're making a movie for a modern audience. It's like, I don't want movies for a modern audience. I want movies that are timeless. Movies that are for all audiences. That are for the modern audience, but also for the past audience and for the future audience as well. And Terminator, 1981st Terminator, is one of those movies where it is just a timeless film. It's one of the greatest science fiction and horror films ever made. Believe it or not, it's actually kind of a horror film. Uh, most people see it more as a dark science fiction, but it did kind of have that vibe of a horror movie. Something that a lot of people have been asking for the Terminator series to bring back because they, they've become more sci-fi action since the second one. And I guess James Cameron now has the rights back to Terminator. And he says he has some plans for doing a new Terminator. Um, quite frankly, like I'm such a fan of this movie and this franchise that I myself have my own idea that I would do if I ever got a chance to make an official Terminator film. I'm not going to tell you that right now because I don't want to give it away, but like just that's how big of a fan I am. And he was hoping that James Cameron actually does something with this franchise because he's kind of um, having Avatar derangement syndrome right now where he's like, I'm going to make nine Avatar films and 27 comics and eight novels and 45 video games and a television series. And it's just like... Yeah, James Cameron's kind of got insane with Avatar Fever right now. And he's talking about doing a historical biopic in between the third and fourth one. But, hey, guy wants to do Avatar films, that's fine. Just please let people do Terminator films as well, because I love this franchise. And I definitely want to see more with this franchise. So, anyway... What do you guys think about 1984's Terminator? Do you guys love this movie? Do any of you actually dislike this film? Uh, what do you guys think about it being 40 years old now? Are any of you actually 40 as well and aging with this film at the same time? Uh, it's kind of interesting being a fan of a franchise and you're the same age as it. Uh, I'm kind of like that with Doom. I believe I'm the same age as Doom franchise. I'm not sure, I'll have to double check. I can't remember if Dune came out in 92, 93, or 91. Someone will have to fact check me on that, and I'm sure someone will mention in the comments down below just the year of when the first Dune came out. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that has just been my thoughts on the first Terminator film and um, celebrating the 40th anniversary. So, what do you guys think? Say it off in the comments down below. My name is Chris Rukov, Lemonade Reviews, and that will be all for today.